Chapter Seventeen. Boxes under a tree. One month later, Eventide looked on silently from his place at the bottom of the basement stairs, watching Bibi sleep. The content smile on the little guy's face was enough to make Eventide hesitate. He really didn't want to disturb such a peaceful rest. Bibi had woken up crying more frequently than usual ever since his sickness, and only last night had he managed to go the whole night without suddenly waking up with tears in his eyes. His sickness had passed in its entirety about two weeks after catching it. It had been persistent, that was for sure. The worst of it had been gone by the start of the second day, but there had been a lingering cough and physical weakness that went well beyond the bug's usual frailty. Eventide had made sure he got plenty of bed rest and capitalized on his own mobile nature as well as he could. He would bring the storybooks down and read to Bibi, sometimes for hours at a time, to keep the little guy in a good mood. And now he was sleeping so soundly, it was almost enough to break Eventide's heart. Did he really have to do this? But alas, there were things that needed to be done today. It was morning, just a few minutes short of ten o'clock, when Bibi was normally supposed to wake up. Eventide had been up for hours already to get things prepared, and was still trying to shake off his own drowsiness. Still, he had a plan, and he wasn't about to back out now. It was too late anyway, and he had to make sure it all went perfectly. Eventide's thoughts were torn away from his day so far when, finally, his phone began to vibrate in his pocket, telling him that it was time. So, with a warm smile... He sidled up to the bed and reached down to give B.B. a gentle shake. Hey, B, time to wake up, he called gently, while B.B. groaned in defiance and buried his face deeper in the pillow. Oh, Daddy. The bug whined pitifully when his father didn't let up, turning a groggy and annoyed pout on him. I don't want to. Five more minutes. Haven't I rolled his eyes in amusement? Oh, quit your complaining. I got a surprise for you, he said with a happy wink. And no, it's not more snow. Bibi looked at him for a few moments, his eyes narrowing. Eventide could almost hear the tiny cogs turning in his brain, trying to figure out what was going on. Mm. What kind of surprise? Bibi finally asked while sitting up and rubbing his hooves into his eyes. Eventide just gave a cheeky little grin and backed away from the bed. Just come upstairs to the living room. You'll see. And I promise you'll love it. He called in a sing-song voice before disappearing up the stairs, leaving the door open behind him. After a few moments of yawning and stretching, Bibi did as instructed. He flew up the steps with his wings buzzing away on his back, rather miffed that his sleep had been disturbed. Now, granted, he was used to getting up at around this time, but he wasn't used to his dad waking him up personally. Usually, he was woken up by his voice over the baby monitor, and that was it. It became apparent why today was different when he came to the top of the stairs and buzzed out into the living room. His wings stiffened, and he fell to his hooves on the floor, looking on with wide eyes and a hanging jaw. In the middle of the living room was a large, lush green tree, covered from top to bottom in spherical ornaments of several bright and vivid colors, namely red and blue. Joining those spheres was a coiling wire of some sort, lit up with green, white, and red light bulbs. Below the tree was a circular rug colored in green and red, on top of which six boxes of varying sizes could be seen, all wrapped in multicolored paper. Eventide and Buddha both sat under the tree, the former watching Bibi expectantly while the latter busied herself with shoving her nose against one of the boxes and sniffing at it. After a while, Eventide made a beckoning gesture. Well, B, what do you think? He asked, finally snapping Bibi out of his stunned trance. Bibi uh... slowly walked forwards, then sat on his haunches a few feet away to look up at the tree in awe and wonder. It's pretty, but why is there a tree in the house? Eventide chuckled and gave said tree a shake with his hand, making the decorations jingle and the leaves rustle. It's a Christmas tree, 
I would have put it up sooner, but, well... He flashed to Bibi a sideways grin. I wanted your first Christmas to be a surprise. Bibi looked at him in confusion. Chris... Chris... Uh, Christmas... He tried several times to say the unfamiliar word. Christmas? He finally managed, looking at Aventide hopefully. That's right, you got it. Yay! Bibi clapped his hooves together a couple of times before looking at the boxes, then the tree, then at Aventide again. His smile faded and he tilted his head. What's Christmas? He asked, clearly bewildered. Aventide looked down at the boxes, his smile growing. It's a holiday. Once a year, people all over the world give their family and closest friends gifts and presents to celebrate kindness and generosity. It's all about giving to others. It also tends to come with a lot of chocolate, special songs, and time with the people we care about the most. He explained before picking up one of the boxes, a wry smirk on his face. And every Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas, while children are asleep, Santa Claus himself comes down on a magic sleigh pulled by flying reindeer to give presents of his own to all of the good kids. Santa Claus? Bibi asked, his voice filled with fascination and childish wonder. He rose to his hooves and started to trot towards the boxes again. Who's that? He's a wonderful man with a heart of gold, who lives in a workshop at the North Pole with his wife and an assortment of elves to help him out. As I said, he brings toys to all the good kids on Christmas Eve, leaving them under the Christmas tree for them to find and open in the morning. Eventide explained before leaning down towards Bibi, who is now sitting right next to him. But you better not be naughty, because he gives coal to the bad kids. Bibi gasped quietly, his hooves flying up to his mouth and covering it. But that's mean! He squeaked out in protest. Eventide grinned. Well, then don't be mean. Now then. He looked at the box in his hand, then lowered it down towards Bibi. I found this under the tree. And look. He pointed at some writing on the top that Bibi hadn't noticed. To the basement, Bug. From Santa Claus. It's for you, Eventide said excitedly before putting the box down in front of Bibi, whose eyes were now as wide as dinner plates and shimmering with excitement. You've been good, right? Yes, yes, I've been good. Bibi replied hastily while putting his hooves on the box. Can I open it? Can I, can I, can I? Eventide nodded happily and put a hand on Bibi's back. <laughs> sure, go right ahead. With a happy chirp and purr coming from his throat, Bibi nodded and scrutinized his present for a few moments, trying to find a lid or something he could pull on. When nothing presented itself... He pouted and looked up at Eventide with an adorably helpless expression. Daddy, where's the lid? He whined pitifully. Oh, uh, you tear the paper off. Eventide explained simply while reaching one of his hands down. Here, let me get you started. With one swift motion, he pulled a large chunk of the paper away from the box, revealing what was underneath. Bibi grasped the concept immediately and set to work tearing the remaining paper off with his teeth. When at last it was all torn away, he looked at what had been concealed. It was a nicely made cardboard box, the lid already flapping open. Inside was an assortment of various pieces of colored paper. Bibi set out pulling the paper away, trying to find his gift at the bottom, all while Aventide looked over his shoulder. What is it, B? What did Santa get you? It's a... Bibi's muzzle scrunched when, at last, he beheld the present. He studied it for a few moments, trying to find the right word to describe it. He ran a hoof over the soft item within before clicked into place in his mind. It's a coat, I think. He exclaimed before pulling out the item in question. Sure enough, in his hooves was a vibrant blue coat with a furry inner lining and a thick hood. What was shocking, though, was the fact that it looked like it fit him perfectly. There were even holes for the wings. Eventide's smile grew when he saw the jubilant look on Bibi's face. It is a coat, and it looks like it fits you too. 
He then leaned down into the box and raised an eyebrow. Oh, look, Santa left you a note too, he said while reaching in and pulling out the slip of paper. Bibi knew the look on his face and immediately put down his coat, sat down on his haunches, and waited for Eventide to start reading. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, Eventide murmured before clearing his throat. When he began reading again, he made his voice sound significantly deeper and more energetic than usual, giving Bibi the impression of a delightfully jolly man. Merry Christmas to Eventide Oath's son, the basement bug, Bibi. I know you can't read yet, but I'm sure your daddy will be happy to read this to you. Eventide paused and nodded. He's not wrong, you know. Keep going, keep going! Bibi explained with his grin growing. What does Santa say? Barely containing his chuckles, Eventide continued. I couldn't help but overhear that you recently became sick in bed with a high fever, and that you do not like the snow very much. I'm so sorry you had to go through something like that, and it does disappoint me so to hear about children being cold and unhappy. So I decided I would help you solve one of those problems with my present to you this Christmas. I made this coat myself. Every single thread, stitch, and tuft of fluff was put together with the greatest of care to make sure you don't have to be cold if you ever go out in the snow again. I also put some chocolate into your stocking on the wall. I know you don't eat food like your daddy does, but I encourage you to at least try it. You might find it tastes delicious. I know I always enjoy a good bit of chocolate in my cookies after a long night delivering presents. Ho ho ho! Bibi tilted his head at that odd exclamation, but did not interrupt. Now then, I must get back to my rounds, as there are many more nice children all over the world who need to have their presents delivered. Be a good boy, Bibi, and have a very Merry Christmas. Sincerely yours, Santa Claus. Eventide set the letter down and watched Bibi for a moment, curious. The little guy seemed to be processing, his mouth wide open and his eyes glistening. Wow, he's nice. Eventide finally burst out laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> now, why don't you put on that coat and see how it fits, eh? He suggested cheerfully, scooting a little closer. Here, I'll help you if you need it. For the next few minutes, Eventide and Bibi worked together to fit him into his new coat. It was perhaps a little tight over his wings, but the expertly placed holes made that a relatively small issue. Once it was on all the way, Bibi looked significantly warmer than usual, and the way his face lit up made it clear he enjoyed it. Still, Eventide had to ask. Do you like it? I love it! Bibi replied enthusiastically, walking in circles a few times while looking at himself all over. It's so warm and fuzzy! Eventide nodded happily, his grin widening. I imagine Santa had to go to a lot of trouble to make that for you. I'll be sure to tell him you liked it. Bibi looked up at him with a happy nod. Yeah, tell him I said thank you very much, Santa Claus. I love the coat very much. Eventide laughed again. <laughs> I'll do that. Don't worry. With that, he reached over and poked out another box. <laughs> anyway, we have some more presents to go through. Fluttershy and I each got you one, and there's also two for Buddha, one from Fluttershy and one from me, he explained, finally ending Buddha's silent torture by opening up one of hers. It was a new squeaky toy in the shape of a bone. The dog let out a happy bark, took the toy in her mouth, and then ran away into one corner, presumably to mangle it in solitude. The sounds of the toy squeaking could be heard echoing all through the house. Bibi giggled merrily as the dog went rocketing by him, then looked around in expectation. His smile faded somewhat after a moment, and he looked questioningly up at Eventide. Oh, uh, where is Aunt Shy? He asked, sounding disappointed. Eventide smiled more softly and pulled Bibi closer to his side. She's with her family right now, celebrating Christmas with them. We won't be seeing her today. Sorry, bud. Oh. Bibi looked sad for a second, then watched as Eventide picked up another of the boxes for Buddha. He looked at it for a moment, then looked at his father. 
Daddy? Yeah? Um, I didn't get you a present, he said, his voice coming out quiet and guilty. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad. Eventide shook his head. After a moment, he gently lifted Bibi up and looked into his eyes. Hey. Bibi? Yeah? Eventide smiled. You don't have to get me a present this year. For me, the best gift in the world is just getting to spend time with you. Bibi's eyes widened in shock. Really? Really. Eventide nodded while setting Bibi back down onto the rug. He gave him a few scratches at the base of his fin, then looked up towards the corner Buddha had gone and hidden away in. But I don't want you to miss out on the present giving, so... A conspiratorial smirk appeared on his face. He leaned down and whispered into Bibi's ear. Why don't you go and give Buddha this present from Fluttershy, eh? Or a little secret. Bibi looked at the box, finding that it was surprisingly small. Still, he took it in his hooves, and while it was a little heavy for him, he could carry it just fine. He looked up at Eventide with a twinkle in his eyes, then ran off to do as his dad had instructed him. After a moment, Eventide could hear Buddha give off another excited bark and BB giggling. Well, she liked it, apparently. Later on that evening, Fluttershy found herself sitting on the front step outside of her house looking out at the snow-smothered landscape with a small smile on her face. She was covered in warm winter clothes, and the warmth in her belly from the hefty dinner she and her family had just finished eating was enough to make her drowsy. There wasn't much cloud cover outside that day, so the setting sun was fully able to cast long orange streaks across the fluffy white terrain, making the world come alive with the sparkles of snowflakes and the glow of reflected sunlight. Her attention was drawn away from the serene view when her phone began to ring in her pocket. Curious, she checked the caller ID and found that it was Eventide. With a frown, she answered the call and held the phone up to her ear. Hello? Eventide? Hey, Fluttershy. I'm just calling to say thank you so much for getting that coat for Bibi. I was floundering there for a little while, trying to come up with something good for Santa to give him, but you pulled through for me. Fluttershy smiled at that and nodded. Oh, it was no trouble at all. Did he like it? He said, and I quote, Thank you very much, Santa Claus. I love the coat very much. Right now he's playing with Buddha in the living room. I think she liked the fact that you got her a full tin of her favorite dog treats. Fluttershy giggled at that. <laughs> well, he's very welcome. Have you two opened the rest of his presents yet? Yeah, we went through them all in the morning. He also wanted me to tell you thank you for giving him that new ant plushie. Fluttershy smiled. I saw how much he liked the old one, but it was getting kind of tattered. Plus, it used to be a toy for Buddha, so I figured he'd like something specifically for him. Oh, he did. Interestingly, he's taken to weaponizing it to smack Buddha in the face, and then he cuddles it protectively when she goes to retaliate. Those two have a very strange relationship. It works for them, though. <laughs> yeah, it does. Now, uh, there is another reason I called you. Uh, I want to ask, how did you get that coat? The thing's a masterwork. It fits him perfectly and even has holes for his wings. Did you sew it yourself? Fluttershy shook her head. No, I didn't. And I'm not telling you how I got it. I don't want to ruin the magic of the day for you. She replied in a teasing tone, and she was just able to stifle a laugh when she heard Eventide snort on the other end of the line. Gee, thanks. He replied sarcastically before chuckling in amusement. All right, well. I gotta go. Baby's at the door, and I told him we'd spend the day together. I think we might go through some of those Christmas storybooks I got. Anyway, Merry Christmas, Fluttershy. Bye. Merry Christmas to you too, Eventide. Fluttershy answered before there was a loud click, and the line went silent. <laughs> 